I'd like today to present the first component of a program uh, that we started a few months ago at IFPRI and that is supported by uh, IFAD on the causes and, and consequences of conflict. Uh, so the program is, is a combination of cross-country analysis, country-specific analysis and fieldwork observations. Uh, but today I will present the preliminary results of a cross-country analysis. So it's very preliminary, so any comment is welcome. Um, I, I will be very, very short about the motivation. Uh, Vito has shown the, the high cost of conflict in, in the Arab world. Um, and this raised the question of uh, why is that countries in the Middle East and North Africa could face explosion of popular grievances despite, in some cases, sustained high growth and improvement in social indicators. So this is a quote from the latest World Development Report. However, I have to say that um, the, the paper I will present is not really about the determinants of the Arab awakening. Uh, it's mainly about the determinants of a major conflict, but still we think that uh, at this particular time in history, understanding the main determinants of conflict are, sp are particularly important. Uh, we know from the literature that a political regime into transition are particularly at risk of falling into a conflict or civil war. Uh, so, but at the same time, uh, the Arab reckoning may also provide new opportunities for reforms. So, um, we hope that uh, the, the old program will help to identify the best way to accompany such political transition without increasing uh, the risk of conflict. So, that being said, uh, the analysis is based on a very, uh, um, very standard conceptual framework in the economics of conflict. So basically, um, the, the main explanation for conflict uh, can be mainly classified into three main boxes. Motivation-related explanation, this is mainly related to grievances, uh, social injustice, uh, inequality, polarization. Opportunity-related explanation is actually related to the opportunity cost to participate to violent action. And so it may depend on alternative source of income, but also the potential loss and rewards in participating to violence. So for example, it might be uh, related to the capacity of the rebel leader to finance a rebellion through, for example, the exploitation of natural resources. Um, and finally, the polity-related explanation may be more related to poor governance or the lack of political inclusion. And I would say also the state capacity either to repress, because it's also an important determinant of conflict, but also the ability to listen to the citizens or to redistribute resources, what I summarize by uh, pay for peace. So, again, we, we, we don't start from scratch in understanding the main determinants of conflict in the regions. So, um, the, the seminal uh, paper uh, on, on this has been uh, uh, the one from Paul Collier and Unka Ufler from Oxford, where actually the main conclusion is that at the global level, uh, opportunity-related explanation matter uh, and not necessarily motivation uh, uh, explanation. So, basically, per capita income, economic growth uh, would decrease the risk of conflict, uh, while actually uh, the, the uh, natural resource dependency would actually increase conflict, while grievance proxies like inequalities actually does not seem to matter uh, in the empirical analysis. But we are mainly interested in the, in the Arab, Arab region. So actually Soli and Gledich in the Journal of Conflict Resolution have actually applied the uh, Collier and Ufler framework to the Arab countries and asking whether the question whether there was a, an Arab exceptionalism, uh, as Professor uh, Dewan said before. So the main conclusion is actually just introducing a dummy to see whether uh, belonging to the uh, Arab world would change the results. Uh, they mainly conclude that actually there is nothing specific uh, to explain, uh, and that conflict is quite well explained by a general of model of civil war, which is the Collier and Ufler framework. However, this study has several shortcomings. Uh, they use a reduced sample um, compared to Collier and Ufler. There is no fixed effect, and we know from the empirical analysis that it may make a, a huge difference. And basically, uh, the predictive power of this model is very low compared to, Sub uh, compared to 
to uh, the one uh, when the model is applied to sub-Saharan Africa. And it's not surprising because basically the Collier and Uffler framework has been developed to explain mainly conflict in sub-Saharan Africa. So we try to, first of all, to revise, uh, to, to revisit uh, the, the result with a, with a much um, complete uh, sample. And we actually find some evidence uh, for uh, such an Arab exceptionalism. In other way, there is something specific to explain uh, for conflict in the Arab world. Uh, and you can show, for example, that uh, if you interact uh, economic growth uh, with the fact to belong to the Arab world, you will find that at the global level, economic growth decreases the risk of conflict uh, yeah, at the global level, but in the Arab world, it tends to increase the risk of conflict. So it is somehow puzzling. So we try to find some possible explanation for that. Um, first of all, um, you may think that the Collier and Uffler framework uh, does not consider um, uh, the, the institution inherited from the past, historical grievances that has been um, that has arisen, for example, in the post-independence period. So we will try to deal with that mainly with a uh, country fixed effect. Also, um, the Collier and Uffler framework uh, seems to neglect the political dimension. So we will try to 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 have something to say about this. And also the, the puzzling result that was obtained uh, for economic growth raise, leads to two main questions. First of all, um, we may ask where the growth is coming, to, is coming from. So this is more related to the opportunity-related explanation. So we will look at sexual growth, uh, the importance of the youth population, but also a better proxy for natural resource dependency. Broadly speaking, Collier and Uffler use a proxy which is uh, the primary export commodities uh, um, over GDP, and we will try to disaggregate uh, this, and in particular to see the importance of oil. The second question is where the growth is going to. Uh, we, we know from the, from the result that has been shown by Clemens uh, this morning that actually uh, economic growth or, or income per capita is actually a poor predictor of poverty uh, in the Arab world. So we will try uh, to use this micro and macro food security indexes to better capture uh, uh, absolute or relative deprivation. So the main empirical uh, specification in one which is based on the probability of conflict in country I at time T using a country fixed effect, time dummies, we then uh, lack the main explanatory variables to reduce the problem of endogeneity, and we try to interact the main explanatory variables with an Arab dummies to see whether something is, is specific to the Arab world compared to the rest of the world. So, first of all, just as a point of information, economic growth in this framework is the only robust finding in Collier and Uffler, and this is uh, not uh, new, uh, seeing the literature. But again, we, we confirm this kind of Arab exceptionalism. Something specific needs to be explained. When we turn to the opportunity-related uh, variables, we do not find any uh, uh, significant impact uh, when you use sectoral growth or for the youth population. But quite interestingly, you find that all dependencies seems to increase conflict uh, and uh, also at the global level, but the effect is completely driven by uh, oil dependency in the Arab world. So, in terms of motivation, we confirm that Gini coefficient is poorly correlated with conflict, but first of all, we know that it's very poorly measured. And second, we know also that uh, it's only capture a particular type of inequality, which is vertical inequality and not horizontal inequality or inequality between groups. But quite, interest, uh, quite interestingly, we found that macro and micro food security indexes significantly increase the risk of major conflict in the Arab world. Finally, the last explanation, um, the policy-related explanation, we look at economic and political discrimination against minorities. Uh, it increased conflict uh, at the global level, but there is nothing specific to the Arab world. But quite interestingly, we find that there is something specific when we turn to past transition to full democracy or autocracy. Uh, so basically, uh, this result suggests that uh, the, the transition between uh, autocracy and full democracy is particularly risky in terms of major conflict. So, 
What I showed you before, I cannot claim that this is causal relationship, so it's mainly uh, major uh, uh, correlates of war. So the only thing we try to do is actually to try to identify the kind of um, um, Arab food security channel. And this is a kind of a very preliminary result. But basically we look at um, the vulnerability of the Arab countries to a change in international prices that was argued uh, so many times uh, the, this morning as an exogenous variation on um, the food security indexes and how in turn this change in food security indexes would affect the probability of conflict. So basically what we find is that um, um, changes in the prices of the main import food, in the main uh, imported food, um, worsen uh, food security indexes, and in turn, uh, the worsening of food security indexes increase the, the risk of major conflict. So, uh, I, we can come back to the result, or you can check in the slide the, the details of the result. So, I think it's it's time for me to, to give you the main uh, preliminary conclusions. So as I said, these are very preliminary results. But first of all, we confirm that uh, transition to democracy, although it's of course welcome, uh, it's a particularly risky uh, period uh, in terms of major conflict. And it seems therefore that given the, the current context, it's particularly important to identify the major risk of conflict um, um, for, uh, at the time to proceed to, to further reforms. Second, food insecurity seems to matter for conflict in the Arab world. Uh, in terms of policies, uh, several um, uh, participants to this conference uh, point to uh, the uh, unsustainable uh, use of, for example, uh, subsidies. Uh, so you need to, we need to, 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 to promote a proper and pro-nutrition growth, and this has been um, uh, explained in the IFPRI food policy report. Third, uh, we find this uh, strong correlation with oil dependency. Of course, uh, oil, depend oil revenues can actually create fiscal space and could in principle be uh, wealth enhancing. Um, but uh, maybe uh, it points to the fact that uh, the system of redistribution of these oil, oil revenues has to some extent become uh, unsustainable given uh, the increased cost of repression, uh, but also the increased cost of uh, redistribution. Um, so uh, we need to, to uh, redirect all rents uh, to proper growth, enhancing investments such as uh, infrastructure and education, and also to go from food subsidies to uh, target, targeted transfers uh, to the most food insecure population. So uh, as a last slide, so uh, I give you uh, already some, some shortcomings also of this analysis. So first of all, it's not a paper about the Arab awakening, as I said. It's only uh, the main determinants of major conflict events. Uh, we need certainly uh, to, to design a new conceptual framework to understand the dynamics of public protest and violence in the Arab con uh, countries, uh, and with a special focus on food security and food policies, and uh, certainly the presentation of uh, Professor Diwan would be a, a, an important source of inspiration for us. Um, also, um, uh, as you, you, I'm sure you are aware of, uh, cross-country analysis misses the heterogeneity uh, uh, that you can find in terms of conflict and in terms of food security uh, situation in the Arab world. So um, our program uh, would actually uh, focus on uh, five main uh, country, uh, country analysis. Uh, and uh, we may actually, uh, we, we started to study the relationship between weather shocks and violence uh, in Somalia and South Sudan. So for example, for Somalia, we, we found some um, uh, preliminary result uh, suggesting that there is a strong relationship between drought and conflict uh, in Somalia and, one of, and we identify one of the uh, channel of transmission which is uh, uh, the livestock market. Uh, just two words, uh, so um, we will also develop the study on uh, understanding the protests in Egypt and the role of food policies and also the development costs of conflict in Yemen. Thank you. <laughs>